We are finally ready to take everything that we have been looking at with electrons, the orbitals that they live in, and put it together into this Lewis model of bonding. And the Lewis model, it's really specific. It is um, a model that you will see going forward in pretty much all of your chemistry classes. It's not perfect, and we have a couple of other models that we're going to talk about after this one, um, but we have to start somewhere. So the Lewis model, what we do is we represent valence electrons as dots. So you've probably seen some pictures like this before. When you have a covalent bond, and a bond is two electrons, and if it's covalent, it's shared between two atoms, we represent it as a line. Or, right, we'll get into multiple bonds, which get represented as multiple lines. So I am going to start with Lewis symbols. You won't see Lewis symbols often. I'm not going to test you on Lewis symbols, but because you will see them and they fit with how this model is represented, we're going to look at a couple. So for a symbol, you show the valence electrons around the symbol for that atom. So you would put two electrons per side, and now the maximum is eight electrons. So we can only do this when we're talking about S and P valence electrons, because you're going to max out at eight. So for examples, I have lithium and fluorine. Lithium, the electron configuration is 1s2, 2s1. My valence electron is only the electron in the 2s orbital. So if I were to write a Lewis symbol for lithium, it would be Li for lithium, and then just that one dot. You can put it on any side. The specific sides don't re represent specific orbitals or anything like that. We're just putting the valence electrons around the symbol. For fluorine, here's my electron configuration, 1s2, 2s2, 2p5. The 2s2 and 2p5, those seven electrons, are around my symbol for fluorine. So I have the letter F, and I've got seven electrons, right? Some of them are paired up. One of them isn't, I, just because I ended up with an odd number. Now, if I gave you the molecule lithium fluoride, you would be able to recognize this as an ionic compound because we have a metal and a nonmetal. Um, so really, we would say that this is a lithium one plus cation and an F minus, a fluoride anion. If you think about the Lewis symbols for those, the, the Lewis symbols that we drew for the neutral atoms kind of help out with this. So my lithium turning into a one plus, it loses that one electron that it had that was a valence electron. And now I don't have any, right, from that, what was my valence level. So I just have lithium with a plus sign. And fluorine, it now has eight valence electrons or eight electrons in that valence shell. I can put eight dots around my fluorine with a negative charge. And now I have valence electrons shown, and I also have my charges shown, which show that electrostatic attraction between the positive and negative that make up my ionic bond. So we will not really have to do ionic bonds. Like, you will eventually see representations like this. The focus of what we do is going to be on putting together covalent bonds in proper structures for how atoms are connected to each other in molecules. So for a covalent bond, we show the bonds as lines, and one line means one pair of electrons. So one line means two electrons shared between those atoms, and we call them bonding pairs. The molecule might also have unshared electrons, and we call these lone pairs. Um, right, I've got abbreviations here. The lone pairs are going to look like what we just saw in the Lewis symbols. So you are going to see just like dots of electrons around the atoms if there are electrons that are not shared with another atom. The goal in almost every case is to make an atom feel like it has an octet. And I say almost every case, we of course have a couple of exceptions, but the octet, the eight electrons, it's going to match a noble gas configuration. So that's usually what we're going for to make that atom happy. 
as an example, but then this is also going to be a little bit of an exception. Let's look at H2. What we're doing is I have my hydrogen atoms. I have drawn the Lewis symbols for these. So it only has one electron, so that one electron is the valence electron. So I've got my dot. If those two hydrogen atoms get close together, they can share those two electrons, right? So my hydrogen on the left, the one that's black, has its electron plus the orange one. It can feel like it is, it has that electron as well because it's sharing with the orange hydrogen. The orange hydrogen has its electron plus it can feel like it's sharing the black electron. And now the two electrons in between the hydrogen atoms, that's two shared electrons, I can write that as a bond. So I can write that as a hydrogen with a single line connecting it to the other hydrogen. And right, this is also a bit of an exception, right? Hydrogen it, with the sharing feels like it has two electrons. Now that's not eight, but it's still a noble gas configuration for hydrogen because two electrons would be helium, which is one of the noble gases. So we should talk about bond multiplicity, which just means that sometimes it can be more than a single bond. So sometimes the atoms need to share more than two electrons to feel like they have that octet. So it's possible to have a double bond, which means that you have two bonding pairs shared between the atoms. So something like oxygen, and this kind of shows also why oxygen is one of our Brinkelhoff. Actually, all of our examples for this part here are going to be Brinkelhoff atoms or Brinkelhoff elements. So oxygen, if you look at the electron configuration and then look at the valence electrons, so the, the valence electrons are 2s2, 2p4. So it has six valence electrons. So if my two Lewis symbols kind of lined up next to each other, you, you may like to start your Lewis structures this way. I'm also going to go through some guidelines on how to start your Lewis structures, but this is just to kind of build up and make the connection. So if you don't like this method of putting them together, that's fine. This is just to show that Right, my black oxygen has six electrons, my orange has six, but if they get close to each other and they each share two with the other one, right? if I put a circle around this black oxygen, including the electrons that it's sharing, it feels like it has eight. And the orange oxygen, if I get a circle around that, including the electrons it's sharing, it has eight electrons. So there are four electrons total in between the two oxygens. So I can write that bond as two lines in between the oxygens. So it's a double bond. Each line represents two electrons. And each oxygen also had four total electrons that it wasn't sharing. So those are still on the outsides of the oxygens. And we're calling them lone pairs. We are going to pair those electrons up. So the four electrons that I have on the outside of oxygen, I'm going to write it in two sets of two. And so the, you will pair up those electrons, these dots on the outsides of atoms, unless you just have an odd number and then you can't pair them all up. Let's do a triple bond. So if it's sharing three bonding pairs, something like nitrogen, which the valence electrons, 2s2, 2p3, so that's five valence electrons. If it shares three of those electrons with another nitrogen, and that nitrogen shares three with the other nitrogen, so my black nitrogen, two electrons that are not shared, three are shared. The orange, two that are not shared, three that are shared. I have six lone pairs well not no i have six pairs of i have six bonding electrons six electrons shared between the two nitrogens there you go so that's three bonding pairs one line for each pair means a triple bond so i have three lines between the nitrogens and then the two unshared electrons on each nitrogen 
Okay. Let's do something that is not Brinkelhoff. In water, if we're putting water together, we have two hydrogens and one oxygen. So each of my hydrogens brings in one electron. That's its valence electron. Oxygen came in with six valence electrons. What we can do is hydrogen can share that one electron with oxygen and oxygen can share one of its electrons with each of the hydrogens. So what we have is oxygen in the middle. It's sharing one electron with the black hydrogen. The black hydrogen is sharing its electron with oxygen. The orange hydrogen sharing its electron, oxygen sharing one electron with it. So there's a bonding pair between each hydrogen and oxygen. So I'm gonna turn that into a line. And then oxygen still has those two pairs, so four total, two pairs of electrons that are not shared, and those are the lone pairs. So my Lewis structure for water has hydrogen with a line connecting it to oxygen to show the bonding pair. Same thing on the other side, hydrogen and oxygen connected with a line. And then my oxygen has the two lone pairs.